Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 38. In this video, we're going to learn about complex fractions. So the lesson objective for today is to learn how to simplify a complex fraction using two different methods. So before we kind of get started, let me just give you a basic definition for a complex fraction. A complex fraction is a fraction that contains at least one fraction in its numerator or denominator. It could have a fraction in its numerator and denominator as well. So let's start out by looking at a problem. So here's a complex fraction. We have 1 fifth plus 2 fifths over 1 third plus 4 thirds. So notice how we have an operation in the numerator and in the denominator, and there's fractions in both the numerator and the denominator. So one way you can simplify this is to simplify the numerator and the denominator separately, and then you're going to have a main division. This is going to be your main division for the complex fraction. So if we kind of go through here, and let me just erase this real quick. If we kind of go through here and simplify the numerator, we already have a common denominator. So we have 1 fifth plus 2 fifths. We would just add 1 plus 2, that's 3. Put that over the common denominator of 5. And then in the denominator here, we have 1 third plus 4 thirds. Again, we have a common denominator, so we can do 1 plus 4, that's 5. Put that over the common denominator of 3. So at this point, we have a complex fraction that's nothing more than a division problem. We have 3 fifths basically divided by 5 thirds. So if you saw that problem written this way, you would know that you take 3 fifths and leave it unchanged, and you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction, which is 3 fifths as well. So you're going to do the same thing here. You just got to get used to looking at it differently. We have 3 fifths again divided by 5 thirds. So 3 fifths is going to stay the same, and we're multiplying by the reciprocal of what we're dividing by. So the reciprocal of 5 thirds, again, is 3 fifths, and we just multiply. 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 5 is 25, so we get 9 20 fifths as our answer. All right, for the second problem, we have kind of an easier one. This is basically just a division problem. We have 4 fifteenths over 12 thirteenths. This is the problem 4 fifteenths times the reciprocal of what we're dividing by, so times 13 over 12. Now I can cross cancel here. The greatest common divisor between 4 and 12 is 4. So if I divide 4 by 4, I get 1. If I divide 12 by 4, I get 3. Nothing I can really do between 13 and 15. So we'd end up just multiplying here. 1 times 13 is 13. Over 15 times 3, that's 45. So this is going to simplify to 13 over 45. All right, let's take a look at 5 plus 3 halves over negative 2. So again, we're going to work by simplifying the numerator and denominator separately. Our denominator here is simplified already. So I can just kind of copy that. I don't need to do anything. For the numerator, if I have 5 plus 3 halves, i got to get a common denominator going there. So I can write 5 as 5 over 1. And the least common denominator I'm going to be able to form here is going to be 2. So I can take 5 over 1 and multiply it by 2 over 2. And I'm going to add that to 3 halves. So continuing, 5 times 2 is going to be 10. That's going to be over 2 plus 3 halves. And I'm just going to copy this denominator for the complex fraction. That's negative 2. And I'm going to continue down here. But in the numerator of the complex fraction, I have a common denominator now of 2. So I'm just going to add the numerator. So 10 plus 3 is 13. So that's 13 over 2. And basically, we could say this is divided by or over negative 2. Now, to make this easy on ourselves, I'm going to write negative 2 as negative 2 over 1. So now I can see this problem as 13 halves divided by negative 2 over 1. So again, it's just a division problem at this point. This fraction here, 13 halves, will stay unchanged. And I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of negative 2 over 1, which would be 1 over negative 2, or you quit negative 1 over 2. It doesn't really matter. Nothing to cross cancel, so we just multiply. 13 times negative 1 is negative 13. 2 times 2 is 4. So you get negative 13 fourths as your answer. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 3 sevenths minus 5 over 21. That's the numerator for the complex fraction. And this is over. You have 5 eighths plus 2 fifths. So this one will be a little bit tedious to work through. So let's kind of just simplify the numerator here, and then we'll work on the denominator in a minute. So we have 3 sevenths minus 5 over 21. 
So we got to get a common denominator going. And the least common denominator we're going to be able to form is going to be 21, right? 21 is 7 times 3. Here we just have a 7. So what I'll do is I'll multiply 3 sevenths by 3 over 3. That'll give me a denominator of 21 there. Then minus 5 over 21. So 3 times 3 is 9. So we'll have 9 over 21 minus 5 over 21. That's going to give me 4 over 21. So my simplified numerator for the complex fraction is 4 over 21. So I'm just going to write up here that this is 4 over 21 and then over. Let's figure out what the simplified denominator for the complex fraction is going to be. So we have 5 eighths plus 2 fifths. So 5 eighths plus 2 fifths. Now to find the LCD here, 5 is a prime number and 8 is 3 factors of 2. So the LCD is basically found by multiplying 8 times 5, that would give you 40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5 eighths and multiply by 5 over 5. And I'm going to take 2 fifths and I'm going to multiply by 8 over 8. So 5 times 5 is 25. And of course this is over 40, right? 8 times 5 is 40. Then plus 2 times 8, that's 16. And again, this is over 5 times 8, which is 40. So 25 plus 16 is going to be 41. And then the common denominator is 40, so this is over 40. All right, so we have 41 over 40 here. So my simplified denominator, again, is 41 over 40. So now we basically have a division problem. We have 4 over 21 divided by, or over, 41 over 40. So to divide this, we take 4 over 21, leave that unchanged. We multiply by the reciprocal of what we're dividing by. So the reciprocal of 41 over 40 is 40 over 41. And we can see that we can't really cross cancel here because 4 is 2 times 2, 41 is a prime number. 21 is 7 times 3, and 40 is 2 times 5 times 2 times 2. So nothing I can cancel here, so I just multiply. 4 times 40 is 160 over 21 times 41, and that's 861. So we're going to end up with 160 over 861 as our answer. So let's take a look at 5 minus 1 ninth, and then this is over 3. So I'm going to write this as 5 over 1, because I'm working with fractions. And I'm going to multiply 5 over 1 by 9 over 9, so that I can have a common denominator of 9. So then minus 1 ninth, and this is all over 3. So 5 times 9 is 45, so this would be 45 over 9 minus 1 over 9, and then this is all over 3. Continuing down here, in the numerator of the complex fraction, I have a common denominator now, so I would do 45 minus 1, that's 44, over the common denominator of 9, and then this is divided by or over 3. Now when we work with fractions, I like to have fractions everywhere because it makes it easier to think about what I'm doing. So instead of just having a 3, I'm going to write 3 over 1. So I can see the division problem is 44 over 9 divided by 3 over 1. That's easy to do. So we have 44 over 9. That stays the same. And we multiply by the reciprocal of 3 over 1, which is 1 third. So 4 plus 4 is 8, so it's not divisible by 3. So there's not really anything I can do to cancel here. So I just go through and multiply. 44 times 1 is 44. 9 times 3 is 27. So we end up with 44 over 27 as our answer. So alternatively, we can find the LCD of all denominators involved, then multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the LCD. So when I say multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the LCD, you have to pay close attention to that. And I'll show you why in this example. So we have 4 fifths over 2 fifths. So what's my LCD here? Well, the denominator of this fraction is 5. The denominator of this fraction is also 5. So the least common denominator is going to be 5, right? Because they both have the same denominator. So when we say we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by 5, I'm essentially saying I'm going to multiply this part here by 5, and I can do by 5 over 1 if it makes it more convenient, and then this part by 5 as well, right? This is the numerator of the complex fraction. This is the denominator of the complex fraction, and each part gets multiplied by 5. Again, this is legal because I'm multiplying by... 5 over 5, which is 1. So if you go through, what's going to happen is this 5 will cancel with this 5, 
This five will cancel with this five, and I will be left with four over one, which is four, divided by two over one, which is two. Right, so I can keep it like this in fractional form, or I can rewrite it if I want and just say this is four divided by two. Right, because this way I would have four over one times the reciprocal of two over one, which is one half. It's the same thing as four over two. Right, so when we do this division, four over two or four divided by two is two. All right, here's one that's a little bit more complicated. We have one fourth plus three fifths, and this is over three eighths plus five twelfths. So look at all your denominators involved. You have a four, a five, an eight, and a 12. So what's your LCD here? Again, this is the LCM for four, five, eight, and 12. So if you think about what we're gonna put in the prime factorization for the LCM, four is two times two, five doesn't factor, so it just goes in. Eight is three factors of two. I already put two factors of two in. So I only need to put in the largest number of repeats between any of the prime factorizations. So I'm just gonna add one two in there. Then 12 is four, which is two times two, that's already accounted for, times three. So I'm gonna put times three. That's all I need to add to it because I already have three factors of two in there. So if I multiply this out, two times two is four, four times five is 20, 20 times two is 40, 40 times three is 120. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the numerator of the complex fraction by 120. And you can do again 120 over one if that makes it more convenient for you. And you're gonna multiply the denominator of the complex fraction by 120 also. So what is this going to give us? We well, have to use the distributive property here because you have some addition going on. So 120 times 1 fourth. Think about what that would be. So 120 basically over four and that would be 30. So I'm just gonna write this over here. This would be 30 plus, next you'd have 120 times 3 fifths. So 120 times 3 fifths. And let me write this over one to make it a little bit more convenient. So I can cross cancel 120 with five. I know 120 divided by five is 24. So this cancels with this and gives me 24. And then 24 times three is 72. So the denominator is gone. You can put it over one if you want, but basically it's gone. So we're just gonna put a 72 there. And again, if you wanted to write 30 over one plus 72 over one, you can, but it's just completely unnecessary. So we'll just write it like this. And then our denominator, again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna multiply 120 times 3 eighths, and then we're gonna to add to that 120 times 5 twelfths. So for 3 eighths times 120, and again, we can put 120 over one if we want. 120 divided by eight is 15. So I can cancel this with this and get 15. Three times 15 is 45. So you'd have 45 over one or just 45. And then plus, again, we're gonna multiply 120 times five twelfths. So we'll have five twelfths times 120. Again, you can put that over one if you want. 120 divided by 12 is 10. So this cancels with this and gives you 10. 5 times 10 is 50. And again, you can put that as 50 over 1 if you want, but I'm just going to put 50. So now we have 30 plus 72, and I'm going to write that down here. That's going to be 102 over 45 plus 50, and that's going to be 95. So our fraction has been simplified to 102 over 95. Okay, let's take a look at one more like this. We have 3 fifths plus 1 half. And this is over 5 6 minus 1 third. So look at your denominators involved. You have a 5, a 2, a 6, and a 3. So what's the LCD? Well, it's going to be the least common multiple of 5, 2, 6, and 3. So again, 5 doesn't factor, so that goes in. 2 doesn't factor, that's going in. 6 is 2 times 3. I already have a 2, so I'm just going to put a 3 in. And then three, we already have that in there. So five times two is 10, 10 times three is 30. So that's gonna be your least common denominator. And so again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the numerator of the complex fraction by 30. And I'll put times 30 over one. And we're gonna also do that to the denominator. So times 30 over one. And again, if I multiply by 30 over 30, I'm multiplying by one. I'm not changing the value of the fraction. I know it looks more complicated, 
but really you're still doing the same thing. You're multiplying by a complex form of one. So again, we're gonna do this using a distributive property. So we would have 30 over one times three fifths to start. So 30 divided by five is six. So I cancel this with this and get a six. Six times three is 18. So this would be 18 over one or just 18. Then plus, next we're gonna have 30 over one times one half. And I can do this down here, but basically we know that we would have 30 divided by two in that case, right? Because we're just saying, what is half of 30? That's 15, right? 30 divided by two is 15. So I'll put a 15 here. And this is over. Next, we have 30 over 1 times 5 6. So 30 over 1 times 5 6. So I know that 30 divided by 6 is 5. So cancel this with this and I'll get a 5. 5 times 5 is then 25. Then minus. Next, I'm going to do 30 over 1 times 1 third. So 30 over 1 times 1 third. 30 divided by 3 is 10. So this would cancel and become 10. And I'm just left with 10 times one or 10 over one, which we can just write as 10. So simplifying this, I have 18 plus 15, which is 33 over 25 minus 10, which is 15. Now I'm not done because I always want to report a fraction in its simplest form. I know that there's a common factor of three between 33 and 15, right? 33 is three times 11, 15 is three times five. So really, if I just divide each by three, I'm gonna end up with 11 over five, or 11 fifths as my final answer.